Greetings. So this is how you complete your secured party creditor documents. First thing you have to do is you have to complete your trust because your secured party recording, your UCC1 financing statement and the registration of your master discharge indemnity bond will not be considered valid unless your secured party is first properly registered with the state. This is codified in the Trading the Enemy Act when they talk about the need and the requirement for licensing. This is also codified in your several state business codes as deals with the Secretary of State. Also under the Trading with the Enemy Act, the alien custodian of record is actually the Secretary of State. So this is the same person that does the licensing and the registrations and the trade names and the DBAs, the UCC1 financing statements, the filings. These all goes back to the same person. But the point that I'm making is that he, they have specific requisites. It's covered in various different policies and laws. I've went through and I've researched them and they have all these different requisites and you need to meet those requisites. It's not, you know, a lot. One of the main ones is just as I said, you know, you have to register your business or excuse me your trust with the state then they can recognize your other transactions as valid okay that's the key how do you register the trust well it's usually going to be a sole proprietorship or an unincorporated association and how you fill out that form is going to be important so I'll kind of get to that um, no you know what I'll go ahead and get to that right now we'll talk about trust registration statement and if you look down here here's a reference see where I'm clicking right here so I'm gonna click this let's go here real quick this is a uh, something it's a Treasury um, document and you can read here if you look it's a uh, what is a trust so this document actually talks about trust but what I want you to pay attention to down here is sample registrations these are how trusts register, right? These are how trusts register. This is the long form of a registration. This is a social security number up here. This is a short version of the registration. And this is a whole long list. Um, so you can use that reference. And the reason why this is important, you know, a lot of people have learned that, oh, they're not letting us file our UCCs and the straw man's supposed to be all capital and the straw man no. no your UCC is supposed to be a trust filing as many of you have understood and again because the secured party is a trust operating under the common law so you one so you know so it's a trust filing so you have to have a trust set up first um, but I was showing you the trust registration statement because where's my UCC one here okay if you see my UCC one I'm not going to show you all of it or I wouldn't or I wouldn't have anything else my, my hard work would be in vain oh shoot but I want to show you this part see now notice here look at my secured party's name John Alex Doe L trustee under agreement with John Alex Doe dated 00 blah 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 that's my trust registration statement this is how you properly register or indicate a trust on your financing statement no more uppercase lowercase and, and all of that how did I learn this um, <laughs> never mind never mind how I learned it <laughs> okay so uh, oh you know what let me show you something let's see if I can yeah here you go right here look at this this is an example of a trust <clears throat> so kind of just what we talked about look at this this is a secured party obviously some attorney set this up Douglas C. Dotson trustee of the you know Mary A. Broner irrevocable trust UA is for under agreement dated whatever I didn't write all this out for a specific reason on mine but anyways what you should notice and pay attention to is that there is a such thing as a trust registration statement now that's just a serious jewel I dropped on you so I'm not even gonna go any further in that but what you can see here is that everything is laid out everything is pointing and clicking and 
trust me, I've put the research in. And if you think that you understand secure party recording, maybe you do, some of you do, but I know only a few people do. Um, I'll ask you a couple questions just, you know, just to challenge yourself. Okay. Take the uh, 1040V payment voucher. <clears throat> Excuse me. Do you sign the front? Yes or no? Who knows? When you send, do you, you know, do you sign the a front of a 1040V when you send it? Then the question I will have is, do you sign the back of the 1040V? Do you sign the front and the back or do you sign the front or the back? Right? doesn't matter all these things matter it's kind of funny how like just you know I remember going through the secure party stuff but when I got into reading like the trading with the enemy act securities exchange commission act trust and denture act 1938 article 8 of the uniform commercial code and the uh, you know uniform probate code man it, they talk about all this stuff in more than one place so it, it, it is out there but anyways Let's go ahead and zip through this. Everything in here is highlight clickable. The way that you get through this is first you click your trust indenture. And your living trust comes up. You go through the living trust. You complete it. Now, the way that I do it, and you don't have to do things the way that I do, there's also going to be an option to use a common law irrevocable trust which is the way that people used to do it I don't recommend it but I have to say that using a living trust is kind of new technology if you will but you'll have the option for both but again I suggest you use the living trust because you know just as I was talking about the trust registration statement when I first executed this living trust instrument and I went and set up an account with my brokerage well what shocked me is since it was a living trust they already knew standard procedure this uses a social security number and the account was basically set up like John Doe trustee under agreement with whatever so that's when I was like whoa that's a trust registration statement so then I realized well wherever a trust is being registered they use a trust registration statement and that's why I was pointing that out on your uh, when you on your UCC one when you do your secure party filing you use trust registration statement that statement is going to match up to the date and the time that your trust was executed that's why it's like John Alex Doe trustee under agreement um, let's look at it so you can better understand what I'm talking about we'll look at one so this one Carl A black and Henry B green co-trustees under agreement with Paul E whatever All right and here's a short version of it those are proper trust registration statements okay so again we I like the living trust because it deals with the social insurance number that is the number tied into the securities that we're trying to redeem that is the number tied into the estate that gives us the authority to use the credit in commerce that everything was set up on you know foreign situs trust and 98 series tax ID numbers have their place but if you try to use it for the purpose of what we're doing with the administrative estate of the United States and titling the securities and becoming a secure party I don't think you're gonna ever be able to do that quite as easily with the foreign situs trust it may seem like it at the surface but when you actually get up to setting up accounts and going after these securities you're gonna run into a situation about the numbers and the authorization and account names not matching up that's beyond the scope of this um, but I just throw that out there to say um, I suggest you work with the living trust now once you now another thing about the living trust and you can google this do your own research it is the trust that allows you to act in the capacity as all three parties grantor trustee and beneficiary right part of the problem with everything being under probate is that the typically the title cannot transfer until uh, 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 the title only transfers upon death so we're kind of superseding that as a living trust does because title has to vest in the hands of the trustee even though 
the title the property still can go to probate at death this allows you to title property during the life of the grantor that's what everything has been about right because we know that there is billions and billions and billions and billions of dollars worth of securities that actually belongs to the people and that's just the truth of the matter anyways to get through this this is the first thing we would have to do is we would execute this you're going to also have access to the document versions you know this is just the PDF but you're going to have clickable access to the document versions you execute this trust go through it put your information in there where necessary more importantly is when you get to this schedule a right here is where you should put your certificate of live birth which is evidence of the estate with your rule 220 affidavit attached to it right you you title it right here this is where you would title it on your schedule a why are you titling it because that's the security and that's the evidence of the estate that's the that's the evidence of everything and this is the title you know that this includes both tangible and intangible property bonds securities promissory notes things that haven't been redeemed houses and cars everything all of that property is supposed to be titled in the in the in the res of that living trust in the possession of the trustee and the way you affect this is wherever it's not in the public record you present this information to the custodian in real time see the commercial jurisdiction under admiralty the maritime rule military occupation they acknowledge and they understand trust law this is why it's important that we do this it goes back into what I said in other lectures you are now creating the governing instruments and the bylaws that dictate how they can interoperate with your estate and by doing this you nullify the existence of the agency when you present a trust indenture and the certificate is annexed there too at this point it you know it has a governing instrument to it there is no more administration it's in accordance with the will of the of the testator which basically is what has been put in place all right so this stuff is very important um but we got to get through this so you execute your trust indenture and you you know you execute it and then you go through all of these little sub processes here's the rule 220 affidavit you attach it to the authenticated certificate of live birth there's a video here that explains how to do it you have a couple of other um, things like I have the treaty of peace and friendship and resolution 75 um, this would be just other addendums that you want to hold into your trust you may have other things that you've learned in your own personal study I have the originals certified from the Library of Congress but I've scanned them in so you can use the copies these are treaties so you don't have to have the original for them to have the forced effect force and effect I would say uh, so here's resolution 75 peace treaty declaration of rights of indigenous people everything in here is clickable um, your DBA I don't have a DBA in here because this is the most simplest thing um, and, and, and this you should be able to do for yourself go to Google type DBA form in your state and you will fill out the DBA the DBA is going to be your trade name the same name on your certificate of live birth that's the name that you're doing business as what you're doing is you're registering with the state so you can be in commerce you can have the proper standing in commerce so the DBA is not your so-called name it's actually really a trade name you register that also I wanted to go back and mention you know we have the treaty here and I encourage you if you have any type of treaty that you operate under include the treaty in your um, include it as an annotation or an addendum to your trust because under the trading with the enemy act and under the military occupation a lot of effort is made to make you out to be an, a combatant or a belligerent or someone who as at odds with the United States so that they can separate you from the estate so as Moors and indigenous people we bring the treaty of peace and friendship of 1836 because they really can't get around that that's the longest standing and still active treaty so 
we also have as you see we have a copy of that from the Library of Congress is scanned in again it's a treaty so you can use this uh, DBA is very simple there's no form here because it's gonna change based off of where you're at all you're gonna do is go to Google type Georgia doing business as or fictitious name form PDF and it's a simple form you're gonna register the trade name and by that we mean the name on your certificate of live birth as a matter of fact I may put my own here as a sample where you can click it and just kind of see it but that's a simple simple task you do the copyright this tells you how to do it here's the template video tells you how to do it the assessment and the fee schedule very powerful stuff this is really powerful because again you're registering the secured party with the Secretary of State so it can have proper standing it's now recognized and its transactions in commerce are recognized so you have a commercial fee schedule right here and everything that's in the trust becomes a part of the public record it actually says that in the corporation's code so how you register this trust and how you put these addendums on the public record is important because these are part of the public record now mind you if you have a vehicle and you're and you own that vehicle you can flip it over and put the and, and and transfer the title to the trust once again you'll be using that trust registration statement in the position where it says the owner see one thing you're gonna know is now that you're doing business in trust whenever you're registering property in the trust on that form or whatever you're registering you're gonna use the trust registration statement because that's what the Secretary of State is gonna be expecting to see to identify your trusts mark in commerce so to speak right so anyway and all of these are gonna be public record so check out this fee schedule man it's pretty bad it's got everything in there for depositions of name driver's license social security number retinal scans fingerprinting mouth swab blood samples DNA breathalyzer skin samples uh, interference with travel temporary detention body clothing search handcuffing everything has a fee now mind you this is public record and and as I was stating before when you're a proper secured party and you're registered correctly now you can now your liens have value now you can attach and those transactions can be can be completed by the Secretary of State so anyway you would do all of these and then you would execute the trust with the Schedule A, the Affidavit Rule 220, and make a copy of all of it. Put it all together. You're going to have your original, which is going to be yours. You keep it in safekeeping. And you're going to have a copy of all of this. Now, how you register it with the state is either going to be an unincorporated association or a sole proprietorship. And in some cases, it's going to be a business trust. I'm going to request that you get with me during your coaching session or some kind of way if you've if you ordered this product from me whether it's to do it yourself or if I'm doing it for you you don't have to worry about that but just get with me so we can make sure you know that's if you can't find out how to register the trust with your state get with me and I'll make sure that you understand how to do it and and do that part the right way so let's see remember I said sole proprietorship or unincorporated association <clears throat> if you were doing a sole proprietorship notice once again who's the owner John Alex Doe L trustee under agreement with John Alex Doe dated etc etc this is the owner statement this is the same type of trust registration statement as I showed you earlier that's on the UCC financing statement it starts difference from look John Alex Doe L trustee under agreement etc that's how you identify the trust starts difference from what we used to do with the uppercase and the lowercase name anyway there's other things that have to be indicated on the UCC to make it valid in commerce uh, I have to withhold something I can't put everything in here okay so how does all of this work well if you want our organization to do your secure party recording for you it's gonna be around twelve hundred dollars and you're gonna to have to have two people 
that you know personally that are willing to be a guarantor on your bond and you're going to have to have a certificate of live birth and I think that's about it if you have that you're ready to go um, you can contact me 202-618-1204 we're not going to be able to take everyone's request what we really recommend and what will help you more is if you make the $500 donation and you get the un restricted access to these templates because this is gonna not only help you do this for yourself it's gonna help you do it for other people and you're gonna learn more you should do it for yourself first before you do it for other people and you should do it for yourself first the correct way and of course if you donate for this template you know I will support you on this if there's anything in this template that you don't understand you can call me and I'll explain it to you if this is part of recording that you don't understand how to call me and I'll explain that to you that comes with purchasing the uh, or that comes with making the donation for the template and we would prefer you do it that way because this is going to be a foundational template from which a lot of other instruction lectures and we're going to have to refer back to this many times especially next year when we get further into securities um, private securities and trying to get into the funding side of being a secured party so if you're a part of the organization and you just really can't afford a $500 donation and and you have been supporting our organization for a long period of time please don't short us because this is really this is worth you know, all of my uh, let's say all of the people that I study with that I've showed this to all of them say that I'm giving you too much and only asking for 500 for it so I'm trying to help bring everybody up to the next level so what I'm asking for is I'm definitely not shortchanging you so don't shortchange us please don't ask for an exception or whatever if you can afford it but if you can't and you've been supporting our organization I'm gonna work with you uh, if you have something to offer you know that maybe that can benefit us or something benefit me or whatever you say I could trade I don't I'm gonna work with you but the you know so yeah there you have it I am so happy guys you just don't know it's taken me a long time to finish this and I've put a lot of prayer into this believe it or not that it reach people that it assists with freeing people and I know that this is gonna have you know a shattering impact you know I just really believe that and of course you know I trust me don't think that I don't understand right don't think that I don't understand that is so much bigger than UCC's in commerce but I know that this is a very critical piece to the puzzle and I'm happy to be to have been able to share it with you peace Hotep Islam